Hello eBayers and welcome to this eBay auction demonstration video for this Harrison 140 screw cutting metal turning lathe. It's an absolute cracker I got for you today folks. The really important thing to clock on this one, Harrison 140 metric lathe, the 140, first of the metric series, but this comes inclusive with a massive package of accessories which include the fabled imperial screw cutting gear. So you can actually cut metric and imperial threads on this humble machine, which really is fantastic. I'm going to get down into the details shortly, but another uh, headline figure for you is it's got a DRO fitted, which is an Accurite, as you can see here. Uh, simply press these buttons and we've got a DRO accordingly, numbers changing. We can go between metric and imperial on there, touch the button. It is a three-phase lathe, so uh, I have genuine three-phase electricery coming through, uh, connected up to this at the moment in time. Um, I'm sure it could be run from an inverter as well, if you have only got single phase. Um, another really rare feature of this lathe, it's actually got the two-speed motor. So uh, I'll put a close-up when I put lots of photos together showing this, uh, but there are two um, speeds the motor can be run at. And therefore, instead of the usual eight speeds, you actually get 16, which is very comprehensive indeed, obviously. Um, gives you a really good range from 34 RPM up to a 1500 RPM. Really useful speed uh, for a lathe of this size. Um, again, as I'll come to, lots of equipment, change wheels uh, and chucks, face plates, um, steadies, etc. We'll come to that. Okay, the Harrison 140. Uh, it is so named because of its centre height, uh, which is 140 millimetres, uh, which is about five and a half inches, and it's approximately 600 mil between centres, um, which would be about 24 inches, um, give or take. Um, those are vital statistics. You get a very generous spindle bore as well on the, on the 140. Uh, the taper on the uh, chuck. Uh, for the, the, the chuck fitting, the accessory fitting is a L00. Um, comes with a, a C spanner, um, so it will be in the box. Uh, for taking that out, a nice simple uh, speedy change of the chuck uh, can be afforded by that. The tail stock is Morse Taper 3, and also nice goodie attached with this lathe is the fact that it's got the Dixon Quick Change tool holder. So if you're unfamiliar with the Dixon Quick Change, rather than a four-way tool post where you set it up and um, probably end up with one or two tools that you use and you rotate the thing um, and you end up cutting yourself on the tool that's sticking out all the time as, uh, as we did in the days before the Dixon uh, Quick Change, it's simply a question of doing that and you can have a stack of these, some of these included, uh, you can get more, quite a common, common thing and you can actually position the lock it and before you um, lock the tool it's also very quick to set the tool up because you can um, set it in place here but importantly you can adjust the height rather uh, sensitively using this that's the locking if you undo that use this thumb screw adjust the height up and down um, really clever invention um, for uh, I suppose aimed at production but it, it, even on one off lay turning it's an invaluable um, method and of course we've got a compound slide here, you can set the angle of it uh, in the usual fashion. Um, as you'd expect from a comprehensive lathe, we have power servicing and sliding, which means we can use the power feed to go that way and we can use the power feed to go that way, which is really good. Uh, and the lead screw is only used for screw cutting, which is this lever here. Um, so for those unfamiliar uh, with the exact details of the Harrison 140, I shall demonstrate. Uh, suffice to say, in terms of lathes, Harrison and Colchester, both really good brands. Uh, this one, I believe, dates from mid-70s. I shall look it up exactly. Uh, but at last of the proper British-built machine tools um, in terms of quality, because... The modern day Chinese equivalent really cannot just get close to the um, design, quality materials, quality of manufacture, quality of finish that was produced with these machines. Um, this is an induction hardened bed. It's also a gap bed. This gap here comes out, you can turn bigger stuff, uh, which is, is marvellous. 
and these were built to last, and they're a testament to the fact that the majority of Harrison and Colchester lathes out there are probably still in use um, today. Harrison 140 was a favourite schoolroom uh, or educational uh, lathe um, because of its rust quality. Um, this example was uh, actually ordered and went uh, to a small manufacturing company um, and indeed I purchased it um, on the basis that it had a DRO, it had all the features I wanted and uh, although it's been used as a production lathe it's had very little use. In fact they were selling it because they had um, CNC machinery that effectively press a button and, and they went, but they were in production so they, they didn't need uh, a jobbing lathe, if you like, uh, such as this. Now I'm only selling this cracking piece of kit because I've got another Harrison 140, I'm, I'm in love with the Harrison 140. Uh, there's not really anything between, uh, pit between them uh, other than this one's got a DRO on and uh, I don't use it. so. Might as well be this one, you're going to get the advantage of a uh, cracking piece of kit and that I shouldn't really be selling but unfortunately my hobby is vintage cars and I've been uh, acquiring far too much stuff than I've got space for at the moment so it's going to find a new home. Right, let's get on with the demonstration, you've heard me talking long enough, um, it shall continue but at least there'll be a motor in the background to prevent you hearing it in full. So cameraman please come over a bit closer. Have a good inspection of the goods. Come on. Don't want to get up. Right, we have down here the on off buttons. We press that button. I forgot to say the most miraculous, useful, and just genius point of this lathe is it has a clutch. So if you have a look, the chuck is not spinning. All perfectly stationary, but I pull this out of the way to demonstrate. This is the clutch lever. So when I move, move this over here, it will engage. There we go. Move it back, it actually breaks and uh, stops the chuck and obviously just disengages the drive. The motor continues going. Now, if you were wanting to put a single phase conversion onto this uh, with a single phase motor, maybe a one and a half, two horsepower single phase motor. The fact that that clutch is there would be a, an inherent advantage because you could leave the motor running all the time. Uh, with the three phase it's just yet another great thing to have. Uh, the controls for the three phase ordinarily are this lever here. So we're in low range forward, that's high range, and you see we're in low range faster. So just to demonstrate that in um, Sort of visual. If we want to go for the full 1500 RPM, uh, we use these levers here. So it's that. There we go. However, if we wanted to only go to 34 RPM, we do that so that it slows the motor down. And if we look at this chart here, we see that horse come over there. This wants to come to the middle, that wants to go over there. And that is 34 RPM. Now I hope as you're watching this you're noticing the ease with which I'm able to change gear. Uh, this is an all geared headstock so these levers effectively glide in and out of their positions. The, uh, the speed required, follow this chart. Quite easy to do like that. This lathe also has uh, reverse uh, both directions, uh, both speeds. Um, you don't have to, but logic dictates you should stop it before changing the direction. Um, so we're now going backwards at 1500 RPM and we can slow it down and we can go backwards at 750 RPM and we can come back here. Something like that. So we can go backwards. Um, some people find for parting off, if you put the tool upside down and go backwards, the swarf tends to fall downwards and doesn't get um, get dug in, pulled into the work, and they, they think it sort of um, lessens the degree of, of getting a tool digging. Um, I don't know, I'm a bit of a lathe hobbyist, so I, I use it occasionally and probably don't come back to it for weeks, but I'm sure the production experts on YouTube, there must be some how-to videos. But anyway, that is the operation of the speed. It's got the Norton um, 36-speed gearbox. 
That's for screw cutting, but it's also for uh, changing speed when you're um, surfacing and sliding uh, for using the power feeds. Uh, now, I'll, I'll show you the power feeds now, actually. It'll be prevalent to do so. So we're going to go back on. We're in low range. actually leave the saddle engaged to the lead screw so you can do a cut, go away, come back, you can electrically reverse it so you're keeping everything together. Um, but with the, the thread dial indicator there's no need. Uh, now on to threading. So this Norton gearbox, this has a, a very large range of metric threads and you take this little chart off and reverse it for some more, tells you which change wheels to use uh, on the right there and you've got this selector here, uh, which you move along, you use that. So you want that one. With a combination of those three levers, as the diagram says, and that gives you the screw cutting. The change wheels live in here. Um, cameraman can come over, please. Uh, you'll see it's currently set up. Uh, I think that's a 120 and an 80. Um, no, it's a 100 and an 80. I'm losing my eye. Um, but uh, and that's a 25 there, but there are, I think, four other gear wheels needed to use in combination to get all the metric threads. Uh, they are all present. Also present are the 63 tooth and the 40 tooth change wheel that allow imperial threads to be cut. Now this is one of the very last of the Harrison 140 lays they ever made, and it comes therefore with this chart. Someone must have worked out that this gearbox, this Norton box, presumably designed as an imperial uh, box in its first light, um, was very um, apt at being converted to allow imperial threads. So this is the chart here. Now there's a little bit of a quirk on this one. You'll note that there is no indicated position for the middle lever. Uh, this chart differs in that that's missing and this line's gone all wonky uh, from the one on my other Harrison. So I will take a picture of the one on the other Harrison and uh, include it with this because you, if you wanted to know, <laughs> it's missing the information. It's a bit strange. It, it must have been their machine that made this was um, struggling in some manner. Um, and say it will be one of the very last to have left the factory. Um, so perhaps that, uh, that explains it. But... In any event, uh, that is there. It's electrically isolated. You see the little switch there, um, so that you can't run with that open for obvious health and safety reasons. Um, but that enables the change wheels that are in here, and I should put pictures of all these uh, on. But it, you put these on for your metric, and these are your two fabled imperial converters. Um, 
where you say vital um, in there. With that, you can get this full range of threads. Um, now, I know some people favour the Colchester lathe, the, the student or, or the Triumph perhaps, on the basis that it has got a comprehensive screw cutting box. I've had Colchester lathes, um, great. I know Harrison's were more expensive at the time. I think they were 40% more expensive. I've always preferred Harrison's, which is why my, well, I've got a 140 using myself and why I got this. Um, I think they're great. And having those rare imperial conversions means that you've overcome the, the one sort of shortcoming, otherwise it being a, um, a, a metric lathe. The hand wheels here are all um, metric, so that they're graduated in millimetres. You have got um, a jewel on here, metric and imperial. And of course, as I was saying, the uh, DRO gets you uh, both uh, metric and imperial at the touch of a button. So just looking inside this um, cabinet, I should put pictures on. Uh, we've got the Dixon quick change. I should find uh, some more cutters to throw in. Dead centre, live centre, there's a couple of those. Uh, all important jaws, it's a Pratt Bernard three jaw, uh, chuck automatic, and these are the um, jaws for them. You can see the condition, lovely, hardly been used. We like the rest of the lathe actually. I mean, that's the point to say, this lathe is in lovely order. There's um, very little in the way of back. Nothing in the way of backlash, um, which is just as you want to see. Um, everything works exactly as it should. It's just all lovely. Cam lock on here. Gorgeous. The um, cheap lays like Myford or something just have a clamp bolt around there. It's got a cam to lock it in, which is lovely. Uh, oh, the other thing, this has got a suds pump. Um, I don't tend to use a suds pump. I don't do any heavy work, so... Um, that's another reason why I didn't actually need it, but this has got the benefit of the suds pump. Never tried it, it doesn't have any suds in, uh, but you've got a switch for it here. Near that running. So, it must work. Um, just want some suds putting in. You've got this little thing that you can bring over here, which is good. Um, other accessories, uh, we've got... Steadies. Steady there. A little bit grubby. They have been in the uh, in the cabinet for a long time, um, but I'm sure they'll clean up well. Um, big face plate. There is a four jaw chuck. Now this is the wrong fitting. It is a Colchester chuck, and I think they call that a cam lock. Uh, however, if they were cut off, um, oh no. That unbolts. Um, take that fitting out and it will fit onto the face plate um, and so it can be used on the face plate. Uh, so you've still got a four jaw, uh, chuck spanner, of course. Um, spanner for that, bit of change tools there. Uh, what more do you want? It's all there, isn't it? Um, Fabulous lathe outfit. Uh, so I'm going to be sorry to see it go um, in, in one manner, although I've, I've still got one. Um, I'm going to look forward to using the space. Uh, the DRO then. Um, press these magic buttons here and it resets. And we can move this. We can move this. Go back the other way. Uh, we can press that button there, which puts it in inches, fractions of an inch. It's great. Um, it's got absolute mode and it's got incremental mode, um, and you, you've got presets, auto enable does something, I'm sure, um, and reset. That's the limit of my understanding of it, I'm afraid. Um, I, it, it's quite useful to have sat there and, and be feeding and watching what you're doing there, um, but uh, that's, uh, that's as far as I ever got with it. It is slightly in the wrong place with bringing the clutch lever over. It does want to be mounted a bit higher, um, which is why I always tend to sort of swing it back and keep it out of the way. But um, really good thing to have. It's a quality 
uh, piece and it appears to have been very professionally fitted with these slides, um, the Accurite slides. Um, it is 240 volt and that is actually plugged in separately because as I've got it temporarily wired here, uh, it is, um, I haven't got the neutral fed in, uh, so it's just onto, um, onto a 230 volt supply at the back. But um, that's easy enough. Right, I'm sure I've missed loads of things. Um, but I just can't think what they are. So it's probably a really good time to say thank you for watching, uh, as ever, with my videos. Um, keep the bids coming. And when you bid, I haven't told you that I've got a forklift. So loading is really easy um, because uh, it's already on a pallet uh, and uh, it can be collected. I'd like it collected in 10 days. Uh, the option ending please and I'd like cash on collection um, it'll be loaded I'm sure we'll get the kettle going as well uh, so it'll be tea and biscuits for the lucky winning bidder free of charge excellent do keep those bids coming and if you have been thank you very much for watching